Um, let's see on this graph, it's a really typical story. Uh, we have two axes here. Uh, the first one is the business values, realized use cases, features, you can call it as you want. And the second one is a timeline, and timeline separated by five parts. Uh, the first one is the start, start of your product. Uh, it's the time when you share your idea, talk about it. Uh, when you realize the first version of your application, like a menu value product or MVP. Uh, the second one part is the part when your product went on market. Your product is good, your product is grow up, and for this time you work really productive. Uh, the third time is the time when you stop build your product, when it's a time when you start to live with that. Uh, and the next part is the time that's the best time when you need to start any refactoring, refactoring of your product. But we don't. And the last stage, I don't know how to call it, and I call it comma. I mean the comma of your product. Uh, it's a time when the typical one hour task can spend one week or more. And when I came to the company, our product was on the last stage. Our team leave us, I mean the developer team, and we hired the new programmers, the really cool guys, the Ruby Ninjas. And we have all of this legacy, legacy of this code. We have 300 of more uh, fat Ruby on Rails model. Uh, we have 50% test coverage, and test was really unreadable. And we did not have any part of documentation. Uh, at once, we can do two fixes. And answer is refactoring, but before start any refactoring, you need to ask yourself the main question, and the main question is for what? And our answer is a fast delivery, and we collect some ideas which write for us. Uh, we want to separate our code for different part of our team can work with different part of our application, and they don't care about, they crush another part. Uh, and like another, uh, Programmers, we want to have a reusable, clear, and understandable code. And when I tell about understandable, I mean the understandable not only for programmers. I mean the understandable for all participants of business. And the last idea is about human resource scale project. Uh, if we hire a new employer, we want the our speed, uh, speed of our development will be increased. And our first idea was a microservices, but I want to make accent on this point. The microservices is um, not a methodology, it's not an architecture solution. It's uh, just a technical implementation. And if microservices give, our, uh, give answer to us how to separate our code, they don't give answer to us how to make our code more readable and more understandable. And we find one solution uh, which right for us, and I want to share it with you. This approach was introduced by Eric Evans 15 years ago. Uh, insane name it book. And if you want to use this practice in your product, you must read this book. Uh, but it's not easy because this book has a really hard language, like a typical German classic, like uh, German Goethe or Goethe. Uh, but I was like, I broke my arm. And I have a two weeks to read this book for two times or maybe three times, and I think I partly understand it. Uh, this book consists of three parts. The first one is about methodology, the second one is about technology, and the last one is about methodology again. And the really typical mistakes of programmers, they don't read any text. They read only code examples. Uh, but in fact, uh, the methodology is more important than technology. I found this simple map when I wrote some article about DDD. Uh, it will help you if you start to read this book. It's a, like a visual implementation of table of context of uh, DDD book. 
and I mark you the highlights, uh, the most important part, which I want to tell you about. Uh, and I separate our next conversation for three parts. The first one is about domain and bounding context. It will help you separate your product. Uh, the second one is uh, ubiquitous language. It's about connection people. If everyone uses the same language, everyone can understand each other. And the last part is a model driving design. It's how to make your code more readable and more understandable. It's, uh, it's a term for this map. It's not a usual term, but we use it. Okay, and let's start. Let's go to the first two patterns. Uh, our two patterns is uh, bound in context and domain. These terms are really close, but it's still different. And okay. Um, and let's use. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. Uh, and let's use our uh, imagination to understand the bounding context is like a border, like a border around the cycle. Uh, it gives some uh, logical limits to work inside of. And the domain, it's an area inside of bound context. It's just a part of your business process. You can have many domains in single bounded context, and also you can separate your domain by subdomains. Um, let's look to these ideas in some practice. Uh, we have a simple startup here. It's a crowdsourcing startup about pizzeria. It's like uh, you bury in a pizza world or you do service. And we have three main roles there. Uh, the first one is a pizzeria. It's just a pizza restaurant from your hometown who did not have any delivery system. And also we have a courier or delivery guys. They won't work permanently. And if they won't get this work, they just need to install our application. And the last one is the most important role is our client. It's just a hungry guy who want a pepperoni. And on this sequence diagram, you can see the main process, which start for making the order and finish at the client door. Uh, this is the main idea of crowdsourcing. All parts of the business are separate, and our job is bring them together. When we describe the main process uh, for this startup, it's uh, orders. We can extract the core domain. The core domain is so critical and so fundamental to the business that give you competitive advantages and is the foundational concept behind the business. This is the domain that you want your most experienced people to work on it inside of uh, some technical structure or infrastructure problem. And after we extract the core domain, we should extract another one. And uh, our first and simple idea is separated by rows. And for simplify, we use uh, one domain for one bounded context. Um, and on this slide, you can see the next pattern of the DDD. It's a context map. Context map is a visual implementation of our business. Uh, and it implements two very important things. The first important thing is uh, strategic importance. If you see on the context map, you can see the plan not only for current sprints, you can see the plan for two or for three sprints. And the second part importance is uh, realize that really important uh, principle of microservices is slow coupling and high cohesion. Low coupling means that two different services, two different applications should be independent from each other as much as possible. And high cohesion means it's about similar meaning, meaning similar logic parts should be in one place, in one service.
Okay, and how we implement these ideas? We implement uh, each new domain with a new microservice, with a new application. And each uh, application we separate by subdomains with a folder structure like a, I don't know, like a Django framework. And you can see here the Pizzeria domain and it has um, subdomains like the authorization, the menu, the news, it's about use about current pizzeria, like some advertising information, and schedule. All of us want to know when pizzeria open and when it closed. Um, okay, and let's go to the next part of our conversation. We talked about ubiquitous language. Um, some time ago, I lived in St. Petersburg for a few years. And for this time, I visited a lot of museums around the city. And in one of them, I saw the picture, picture of elephant. Not this one, but really similar. And as you see, this elephant have not, didn't have any ears and didn't have any tooth, I mean the big tooth. But it has scratches like a lion. Uh, but why elephant look like that? In middle age, uh, Artists doesn't have uh, didn't have any television, any photography, and internet, and they paint the elephant by description. And if description is not correct, then your application will be like that elephant. More methodologists tell us speak the same language. Uh, they tell us uh, organize some dictionary, some glossary, some thesaurus. But ubiquitous language, it's more the same words. It's a common understanding. It's like a chemistry. Start listening together. Don't separate your team into developers and into businessmen. Oh. It's an example. Uh, it's an absolutely similar task, but uh, defining two different people with a two different mind. Uh, the first one is um, give you step-by-step -step instruction how to get the beer, like imperative style, like a rubicon. And the second one give you only final result, and you need to find the way. It's a uh, declarative style, like SQL code. Uh, I would not say that one description is better than other one, and you don't need to change the mind of other people, but you need to understand both of them. And also you need the both of them is understand you. Each team is unique on own way and there are no union for recite for learning to understand each other. But until you know how to read other minds, you need something to begin. And my suggestion is start write documentation. Uh, the really typical mistakes of programmers, they won't change documentation with something else, uh, with a test, with a specification, or programmer would say, my code is so expressive, they, I don't need documentation, it's all. But remember, the code is for machines, and documentation is for people. And the documentation is a really good solution, because you write it not only with your developers, you write with your marketing, with your finance, with your clients, with your whole team, and when you develop the documentation, you develop your new big West language. And uh, another mistake, the people really scared to start writing documentation. They tell me it's a boring, or they tell me it spent a lot of time, but if you're expert in the main area, it's easy for you. For example, I wrote this documentation about authorization system for a half hour. Uh, you don't need wrote the detailed documentation. You don't. You write. You need wrote only understandable documentation. Uh, I can give you a lot of hints how to write documentation, but we have no time for that. And we go to the last part of our conversation to model driving development. I want to show you our solution of uh, architectural implementation of DDD. It's based on classical DDD architecture by Eric Evans. Uh, and we collect some ideas from uh, Oni architecture, hexagonal architecture,
clean code by Robert Martin and his solid principle and single responsibility, of course. And I won't make the accent of single responsibility if you use the Ruby on Rails framework. Uh, the all responsibilities exclude the controllers and the views consist in a model, in a single file, in a single class. I mean the responsibilities like validation, uh, some responsibilities like representation if you use method to JSON, working with database and business logic of course. And when I tell about the model, uh, I don't mean the model in a Rails meaning. I mean the model like a representation of real world object. And the good example of model is a topographic map. Topographic map does not consist any middle, reverse, forest, but if you want to know the distance between two real world objects, of course you can go to the place, uh, use your ruler and measure it, but really simple if you just use a map. And a good model make your work really simple. And the main idea of model driving development, it's a uh, make your model close to real world object as much as possible. Okay, uh, let's see to our implementation. We have uh, four actions here, the create, processing, storage, and representation. And if you realize some difficult uh, task with uh, some different endpoint, you don't need to use all of them. You have uh, four typical ways, uh, which mark with uh, some color lines. Uh, it's work like a variator from your washing machine and finally you always uh, have a rising and speeding. Excuse me. Representation layer. Main responsibility of this layer is to represent uh, data in expected format. Uh, if you want to show some HTML page, you just use a view pattern. If you want to show some data for another microservices to JSON or XML format, you use a serializer. Or you can get on the response code. For example, if you wrote some, I don't know, health checker, you can get the response code 200, and that means oh, okay. Uh, and go to the next one. The next one is the storage layer. Um, storage layer help you work with the data source and when I talk about data source I mean not only database, I mean the, it's maybe SQL, no SQL, memcache, file and you can use for data source external, some external API and after we extract or store some data we need to re represent it to end user in expected format and we use the representation level again. Um, and let's see the idea of gateway. Uh, gateway is the um, if you store some data in the external storage, storage data source, they usually have a lot of API methods. For example, if you tell about SQL, we have a select, update, insert, left join, right join, and all the combination. But for our response model, we don't need to use all of them. We need only part of them, and gateway uh, work like a filter, and we realize the gateway with uh, two absolutely in difficult uh, patterns, but with uh, two different destination. Um, and gateway help you uh, organize all your methods uh, which you use work with external source API uh, in one file. And if you want to uh, move your data from your database to uh, another microservice, you just need to uh, rewrite only one class. It's really help you. It's really help you to separate your product to microservices. Uh, and if you wrote, read some articles about uh, repository in the internet, 
uh, you will see a lot of example when people realize repository pattern by active record. But active record pattern is absolutely different pattern with uh, them advantages and disadvantages. And don't use it uh, for realize your repository. It's a really bad idea. And the next uh, layer is a business layer. It's a, a point of our conversation. The business layer is separated by two parts. Uh, the response model is a more the structure and we realize some action on use case level. Uh, on business layer you process some data and after that you store it in your storage layer and represent it in a representation. If you start with some information about DDD you can find a lot of articles about value object versus entity. Uh, but these two patterns are really different. Um, for example, if you roll some playing game like a poker, uh, the entity is a playing card, just a piece of plastic, which you can hold in your hand. And the value is a mark, mark on a corner, uh, like a ten of a heart or queen of a diamond. And business value and value object really help you to describe uh, your business object because if we tell about some, you know, maybe somebody you realize some feeling or transaction and money it's not just a number, it's a number and a currency. And if we tell about temperature, it's not a number, it's a number and unit. And in simplify entity it's a structure, but it uh, should consist some business logic there, and but for start, I don't uh, recommend you do that. Put it on uh, use case level. Relax after your fair trails model. Uh, you can realize uh, the entity simplify with a, I don't know with a just with an open struct, for example. Um, Interactor. Interactor is the most important pattern in our architecture. It's the one that describes the business process, not implemented, only describe it on a high level. Um, you can see on the slides a very important business process, like I make the pie with the garbage. And if you read some professional cookbook, uh, you don't read about how to slice your garbage and how to make dough. And Interactor describes uh, all process only on a high level. And all implementation, uh, all uh, low level should be on a um, uh, use case level with uh, some uh, services uh, and another functional objects like a commons. Um, for example, this is a service. I, Sure, most of you use this pattern, and I won't stay on it for a long time. It's a functional object uh, that realizes the process step by step instruction how to make something like a slice of garbage. Uh, and all details of business process should implementation there. Uh, and it's a last layer, it's a layer to help out collect our data, we have a form here and some validator. Uh, the form is really material pattern. Imagine the situation when you went to the bank or some government agency and you need something, but in fact you need uh, the government make the work by your request. And you get the paper application with a lot of input, you fill it. And after that you get to the agency employer and they validate it. And if it's okay, they start work and you get the result. And this is a form, this help you with that. Okay, this is a full map. It's a summary of everything that I talked about. It shows all connection. You can make a photo if you want. Of course, we start.
start our project on Ruby because we're a team of Rubyists. Uh, but this turned to be a very successful solution because Ruby is still one of most expressive programming language. Like Matt said, it's optimizing for programming happiness. Uh, this code was brought by Eric Evans 15 years ago, and in fact, we have not a lot of technical instruments with, which help us to make some DDD project. And thank you for your attention. If you're more interested in this topic, we are working on open source project like a micro framework or toolkit. Uh, we start right there's a lot of guide guidelines which help you to understand the general ideas and a lot of code which I can help you realize your project based on patterns I have discussed today. Uh, we have a lot of plan. We plan to translate our guideline in English, uh, write some generators which can help you start your project and realize the basic classes. Uh, and we want to publish some code example of production ready microservice application. We need your feedback, and uh, it's really important for us. There is our contacts. Uh, now, if you have any question about my presentation today, I'd like to answer. Thank you for the Any questions? Yeah, so let's start. Do I need a mic? Yes. Uh, yeah, so great presentation. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the first thing that uh, came to my mind was like the Trailblazer framework. What's your view on this? Uh, Trailblazer is a. Um it's a good application, but it's a little bit complicated sometimes. Uh, I really like the operator, but first version of the Trailblazer it's easy, but second version it's more harder. And for realize simple logic, you don't need to use them. But if you want, it's it's really good solution. And uh, why yeah, not? I think it's modular enough. I mean, if you need form objects, you like you use form objects. If you need serializers, you use serializers. Yes. If you need operations, you just use the operations. And yes. I think the, the community support is like good enough. Yes. Yes. Of course, you can use a Trailblazer, and it's it's good. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, one question I have about applying DDD in dynamic languages as Ruby is uh, that uh, without having this strong type, it's strong but static typing, it's sometimes difficult to operate on value objects. How do you handle this? I think uh, Ruby is not uh, doesn't have a strict type, and it's good. Uh, we wrote some wrappers uh, because uh, you don't really need to uh, identify some uh, type by class. Uh, for example, if we tell about the playing card again, uh, you can send um, the string like 10 and some Unicode, and it's okay. But if you have a strong type, you always, oh, it's a string. Uh, but you can write the 10 and uh, clubs, it's another string, and you need to identify your type by class type, you need to identify it by format, and if you write about some wrappers, it's really easy, and it's not a problem, we use really struct types for identify value object. Uh, if you want to store it in your database, you roll the mapper and mapper can help you with that. It's not for startup. It's uh, good if you have a 
project with the profit when you finish with uh, Rails because Rails give you a really quick startup and uh, go your profit. And after that, if you want to uh, get a plan for a long time, it's really good solution because if you hire a new team member, you always get increase. It's really stability increasing uh, for a long time. But it's not good solution for a startup, but maybe it's good solution for a uh, for your home pet project because it's really grow up you like a professional uh, and it's a good solution for project with a uh, difficult business logic for a commercial project for a financial project and if we talk about uh, Ruby and DDD it's a good solution for a middle tile financial project like like us. Uh, but if you really don't huge bank like a spare bank maybe, <laughs> uh, you always use a DDD with a Java, with .NET, it's, it's, that's work. Yeah? Uh, uh, DDD and Rails, it's a good solution. Uh, uh, DDD and Ruby is a good solution. DDD with Rails and it's not good. <laughs> Do you invent while you're like develop during the development? Because if you are a startup, you usually don't have like ubiquitous ubiquitous language, right? And uh, there are a lot of new words. How many how many new words you invent? Uh, sorry, one more again. Uh, you say that we need to have some kind of ubiquitous language yes. between client and uh, and development team, right? Yes. And uh, what if we the what if we uh, develop a team who make a startup? There are like no client, no existing words. We do something new. How do you deal with this? Uh, start the knowledge base. Use some application like Notion and just write a simple documentation, and it's really easy. It's it's it's, it's, it's really just just start writing, just start talking and talking together. I don't know how, how, how. because uh, re really different teams uh, have a different language and no universal recipe. Yeah, I had experience while while we were doing like a lot of new words and it was hard ah, to deal with words, them. Yeah. Words, yeah. Mm -hmm. New terms, we need to call this this somehow. Uh, the suggestion of DDD if you use the same words in the different domains. Uh, for example, uh, you see the pizzeria startup, yeah, and we have a client, and we have a delivery, and we have a pizzeria, and we use a account, okay, account for pizzeria, account for delivery guy, but it's still word account, but you can use one word for different domain with different meaning because uh, uh, you have a uh, limit words and you can use the same words for different domain area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So. <clears throat> thank you, Alexander. It was a very interesting talk.